I must admit this is, this is a bit more daunting than I was expecting because I wasn't expecting to be up here with lights so bright that I couldn't see anybody in the room. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for coming. Um, as John said, my background is that I've been around in telecoms for a long time. Um, and I've been helping businesses solve their business problems that are uh, based around telecoms. And I've been looking at that um, fairly intensively with a lot of organizations for a long time. Um, but what I didn't want to do this morning was get into uh, a situation where I'm just talking about technology because you can all go and find out about technology in many different places. What I want to do really is look at some of the issues that I've seen that have come up from telecoms uh, that are affecting us in our lives and that are actually changing the way that our minds are working, the way that our uh, perceptions happen in this world and how we really ought to be looking at the effect of technology and the effect of telecommunications on, the, on our lives and whether it really is uh, helping us as much as it should be and whether it is in the right place in our lives. Um, so this presentation is about taking responsibility within my industry for the effect that my industry is having on the world. Okay, so the theme of this conference is cleverly connected. We're all cleverly connected now, technology-wise. There are lots and lots, as John was just saying, we're all um, able to connect with people all the time. But is it right that we connect with people all the time? And how clever really is it to be connected all the time? So what I've talked about here in this heading is life balance in the modern world. Communications, who needs it? Do we actually really need the communications that we've spent all our energy, uh, within my industry at least, developing and making available to the world. Um, and of course we need it. Of course we need that communication. Of course the whole of our development as a, as a, as a nation, as a world, depends on communication. All of our businesses de depend on communication. But what we've got to try to do is balance that. So really, what's the problem? Texting while walking is now a crime in Philadelphia. We've got a problem with people texting while driving. 995 people killed in one year in the States because drivers were texting while they should have been paying attention on the road. We've got Facebook addiction disorder. We were talking about this earlier on, where actually people are become stressed and nervous when they can't get onto their Facebook pages and, and communicate with their friends over Facebook. They forget how to interact with people face to face. We've got a situation where sat-nav is directing people over a cliff and the people are following that sat-nav's direction. We've got lorry drivers coming into this country following their sat-navs and being, um, going into narrower and narrower tracks until they cannot move any further and they have to be hauled out. We've got the Times of India reporting on mobile phone addiction. Nomophobia, no mobile phobia. This is a phobia where if people don't have immediate access to their uh, mobile phones, they're actually stressed, they become unable to deal with their lives. And, f and mobile phone conversations involve so much of our attention that it's the equ equivalent, if we're doing that on the road, it's the equivalent of driving while drunk. So now we're in a situation where there are wider issues as well. France Telecom 
as a telecoms organization are actually in court at the moment because what they've done is they've, in the interests of reducing their uh, staff levels because of the, uh, the situation in their business, they've made their uh, in working environment so unpleasant that 30 people have committed suicide rather than face the situation that is happening in that company. We've got a lot of pressure from government and on government to provide the 21st century network that this country insists that it needs. So, uh, I've been involved, for instance, with the development of broadband for the Forest of Dean and for Hereford. And what we're finding is that there is a, a, an enormous um, expense required to set up that network to make high-speed uh, broadband available within the Forest of Dean. But if I was setting up a business that needed uh, 50 megabit per second up and down trans uh, transfer of data, I probably wouldn't want to go and set that business up in the Forest of Dean. And there is an argument that it would be cheaper to give those individuals in the Forest of Dean access to satellite broadband than it would be to set up the cables that are needed for that. We've got phone hacking scams costing, well, this figure here, one phone hacking scam in March 2012 in the UK cost businesses approximately one billion pounds. There's a US Select Committee report which indicates that China may be spying on phone calls and emails uh, because they're selling systems to the states and those systems have embedded in them uh, technology which feeds the information back to the Chinese Secret Service. And let me tell you, especially sitting up here under these lights, 100 megabit per second access from this building onto the internet means that my presentation is now being live streamed onto the internet. And that is, believe me, that is extremely stressful. <laughs> so we've already talked about texting while walking being a crime. But in actual fact, to avoid uh, the accidents that happen when people are texting while walking, it's now possible to use an application which makes your screen transparent so that you can actually have the camera set up to feed immediately onto the screen and you can text on top of the picture. Which means, of course, that you can text all day and not bang into anything. The other thing about availability that I was talking about earlier on do you really want to be available all the time? I was on holiday in Greece a couple of weeks ago, and one of my neighbors in the hotel, I never saw him without his iPhone in his hand, and he was tapping something into it. I also didn't see him smile very much. And I go skiing, and I'm in a cable car and an idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device an idiot is attempting to reach you on your cellular device this happens when somebody else in that cable car gets a phone call because I leave my mobile phone back in the room and I find that when that happens my thoughts are immediately taken to all the things I haven't done all the calls I should have made, all the calls I'm expecting. And is that really what I need on my holiday? I can tell you that it absolutely isn't.
I was expecting there to be a table up here. Okay, so getting through this uh, series of notes. Looking at the analogy that's presented in this picture here, which I have to give credit to Peter Senger for, this is really about something that I heard about in the news a few days ago. This is the problem where people who use uh, headache pills frequently are actually getting to a point where they keep taking aspirin or equivalent for a headache. They keep taking it, they keep taking it, they keep taking it. After a while, they develop side effects and the health problem that occurs as a result of that is that they get headaches. So they get headaches from taking the pills that cure them of their headaches. Where is that um, solution for that situation? They have to actually stop taking the headache pills completely. This is um, according to a, a radio program the other day. What they've got to do is they've got to do, they've got to go the other way. They've got to reduce their overcommitments. They've got to reduce their stress. When they do that, the headaches go away. They don't need the pills, and everything is as it should be. And this is what's happening with our dependence on technology. What's happening is that we have this desire for efficiency. We have this desire to be available. We have this desire to fulfill a role in our lives which requires us to be available. So we, come, we become dependent on that science and technology. We become uh, like the three kids I saw walking down the street yesterday, all texting. And they're all texting other friends who are not with them. And when they're with those friends that they're texting while they're walking down the street, they'll be texting the friends they were walking down the street with. So we're we're having this constant, um, I don't know, juxtaposition really of individuals communicating with individuals that they're not with. I was having lunch in a pub a couple of weeks ago. Two guys came into the pub. One was on the phone when they came in. Shortly after, his, other, his friend made a call while they were there, they interchanged the position of making a call or receiving a call. They may have spoken for about three or four minutes during the whole 40 minutes I saw them. And then they left. And my bet is that they would call each other later to catch up with the things they should have talked about <laughs> while they were there. And that's what's happening. This desire for efficiency is driving us to this dependence. And we're being driven by it in return. And that's where this is happening. The environmental issues, the lack of ability to interact with each other. Facebook phobia is becoming uh, a known situation as well. So what we have to do is we have to learn to turn the darn things off. We have to learn to actually say to ourselves, do I need this? Do I need this now? Can I wait? Can I leave my phone off? Can I leave my phone in a mode where it's going to take messages for me? I was talking to Chris earlier on who's uh, helping manage this event. And she's saying that she's had to teach her father to text because she doesn't want to receive a call while she's in a difficult position. In a, in a supermarket queue or something like that. So she's taught him to text because he doesn't like to leave messages. So I said, look, just tell him, phone you. No need to text you, just phone you. 
and you look at your missed calls and phone him back. Very easy. We don't need to be in a dependence on these things. So, really, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about a situation where we have the most fantastic communications available to us. We're always available. We can communicate from anywhere. And what I'm suggesting is that we continue to do that. We continue to be available, be able to communicate, but that we balance that, that we balance it with a human interaction requirement in our lives which will give us the perspective to manage our technology, to manage our communications, and to keep that life balance effectively. Not to, be, uh, not to go the other way. When I was looking at the pictures for this uh, presentation, I was actually looking at a picture of, uh, of an Amish family, you know, the Amish in North America who don't have any technology. I'm not proposing that at all. I would be out of a job if I were to, uh, to propose that. But how do we fix these problems? I'm not sure, really. It's a bit like eating an elephant. You have to do it one bite at a time. And where do we start eating? This significant elephant. It's an elephant in the room. It's with us all. So we need to address the issues. And what do we have to do to address the issues? Um, it's really over to all of the people who are listening to this streamed online all over the world. There may, there may be four people listening to it outside this room, actually, but hey. The thing is, though, what we have to do is we have to put this on the agenda. We have to put life balance on the agenda against the technology. And I hope that having opened up discussion on a few of these topics in the last few minutes, that this will be on your agenda and on the agenda of a few other people in the world. And uh, I'd like to close on that and thank you very much.